Okay, good evening class. Today we're going to have a teach back on the endocrine and respiratory system. Today is October what? Eight. Eight. And 12 days from now will be my birthday. So therefore, when is my birthday? There you go. October 20, I'm a Libran. I was born October 20, 1960. 10, 20, 60 at 10, 20 a.m. And I will be 60 this coming October 20, 2020. Isn't that amazing? 10, 20, 20, I will be 60. I was born in 1960. 10, 20, 60, what time? 10, 20 a.m. What a coincidence. So better look for me on that day. Remember, 10, 20, 20, 20. At 10, 20 a.m., two things could happen. One, I could win, what, $500 million? And you better bet on my ticket or I can say goodbye to this world, right? So, who knows? You can never tell? Okay? Now, endocrine glands, as everybody knows, is different from exocrine. Why? What is the main reason? Ducks. Ducks. Quack, quack. Okay, the quack, quack, not the duck, duck. Okay. So, as, I, as, as you have seen, uh, maybe, how many of you, not only once, there were a lot of series of the same topic, right? Yes. Uh, I think there was one in May and there was one in August, so. The bottom line is that if this were the skin and you have a skin pore and this is a duct which essentially is a, a tube and this is the gland called the sweat gland and what is found inside the sweat gland? Sweat. Oh my goodness, don't you love anatomy? Yes. And if this were an oil gland, what's inside the oil gland? Sebum. Otherwise known as sebum. Therefore, what is the name of this gland? Sebation. Oh my goodness. I really love anatomy. You love anatomy. You should love anatomy, right? Okay. Oil gland, sweat gland. Both of them are glands that contain or have what? Ducts. D-U-C-T-S. Not the quack quack duck, right? Quack 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 quack. Now, Endocrine glands, on the other hand, do they have ducts? No. 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 What do they have? A gland that does not have a duct. Therefore, what do the horm what do they produce? Hormones. Okay. And hormones, in order to reach their target organ, must be what? Blood vessel. There should be a blood vessel beside the gland, right? So, what's the smallest blood vessel? Capillaries. Okay. So you got arteries and veins, right? Okay. Arteries brings oxygenated blood to the gland. Carbon dioxide from the gland goes out. But essentially, what is the 405 freeway or the road that brings these hormones to their target organs? The blood vessels, the blood circulation, right? Okay. The idea, therefore, is that in order for them to reach their target organ, you have to have blood vessels. And what is found inside a blood vessel? Blood. Oh I was doing it in front of the cadaver a while ago and everybody, every student, what's happening Dr. Gum? I'm having an intellectual seizure. <laughs> I just saw the extension in ditches in the cadaver and then there was a, oh my gosh. Same thing here. Don't you love anatomy, right? Okay, now, if these hormones are responsible to bring about effects on different cells and tissues and organs, they have to be able to reach them so that the effect desired to be possible, right? For example, in the anterior lobe, you have the growth hormone, right? Do you want the growth hormone to reach the bones? Yes. yes. And the only way that it can reach the bones would be through where? Through the blood circulation. Now, where do you find the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland? In the brain, right? So it travels through the blood circulation and goes to every bone, promoting bone growth. Right? That's why if you have excessive amount of hormone called growth hormone, you become what? A giant. It's called gigantism. G-I-G-A-N-T-I-S-M. You could be eight feet in height. Anybody who's an eight footer in this class? Okay, I can tell that you are eight inch tall. Okay, eight footers. Why, why are they eight footers? They have a tumor of what gland? And this tumor, therefore, allows them the over secretion and production of what hormone? GH. Growth hormones. On the other hand, if there is under secretion, what happens? 
dwarf is only present. See? So the idea, therefore, is that if you know the hormone and what it does, you would be able to know exactly what would happen to your patient. Isn't that what we want? Your knowledge of anatomy is necessary to make you pass. Yes, Lilith? Oh, sorry. Is it, is it dwarfism or cretinism? Dwarfism is a word which means short stature. Uh -huh. Okay? So that means you're vertically challenged. Okay? What you're saying, cretinism, that will fall under the category of hypothyroidism. Okay, remember the thyroid hormones, are they also important for bone growth? Yes. Yes, and we're going to talk about that because they're important for what? Metabolism, right? Of the cells of the bone, okay? Okay, so, my point is that by knowing what the, where these hormones are produced and what their target organ are, then you can be able to what? Apply them in whatever of course you take, in nursing, in medicine, in pathophysiology, which will be my class maybe a few months from now. How many of you have taken physiology before not, that's already credited here? Because I was surprised. I had a student right now taking anatomy. The following term, he was already in my what? Physiology. I said, what the heck? I said, why are you here? Oh, Doctor, I already took physiology in another school and it was credited, so I can go directly to a path of physiology. Okay. Not bad. Okay. Now, If you were to study the endocrine glands, there are many ways to do this, Like, right? What about using a table, right? And you probably saw what I had done by coming up with a table without looking at the book or the notes, right? And that's exactly what you are expected to do. Without looking at your notes and your book, come up with a table, right? So what should be the components of this table? The columns could include what? Glands. Yeah. Glands and function. Okay. Function or hormone? hormone? Hormone first, right? And then what next? Function. Okay, so in other words, what does the hormone do, right? Right? Okay. And what is the other way, if I were to study this, what is the best way to study this in a very highly organized manner? Top to bottom. Top to bottom. What do you mean by top to bottom? Like starting from the hypothalamus. Starting with the glands that you find where? In the brain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now remember, can anybody remember, in the lecture on the brain, where do you find the hypothalamus? Anyone? Yes, yes? <laughs> of course. What does hypo mean, my dear? Hypo means what? Below the what? And what does epithalamus mean? Above, Above what? Epithalamus. So what are the three components of the diencephalon? Epithalamus, thalamus. Amazing. What does epi mean? What does hypo mean? Below the thalamus or above the thalamus. So. Where do I begin? <laughs> okay, let's put the word hypothalamus here. Mm -hmm. Does the hypothalamus produce hormones? Yes. yes. And what are these hormones produced by the hypothalamus? ADH and oxytocin. ADH and, and then what? Oxytocin. Okay. So what should I put in this table that is important, that I need to what? Remember and what? Retain. Where? Rain. Because time is of the essence and ink is of the essence. I don't want to be wasting my ink writing a lot of unnecessarily what? Rubbish words. Where do you throw the garbage? Trash, trash can. Where do you say, where do you throw the trash? Trash can. So as much as possible, you have to develop your own way of discernment. Which one is important, which one is not important, right? Therefore, what would be important for ADH? What does ADH do? Retains water. Huh? Water. Retains okay. water. Retains water. So water, retention. And what does IDH mean? Anti? Diuretic hormone. What does anti mean? 
Against. And what is diuresis? Making wee wee. Which means what? What's a word that means making wee wee? Urination. Urination. What else? What's another word that means urination? Void. Huh? Void. Voiding or void. What else? Evacuate. No. Hmm? Okay, it's like this. I don't know if I ever told this to you, my dear students. Intelligence comes with words. The more words you have, the more words you know, the smarter you become. In other words, I've been doing this for many years. I talk to you, you speak, you say a word. I can, I'm not saying I can already measure your level of intelligence and IQ, but I can tell based on the words you say. The more limited your vocabulary is, will that also you limit the, of your ability to understand and comprehend your lessons? Will that affect the ability to understand your books and notes you read? Will that affect your ability to retain the information? Of course, right? Okay, give me another word which means making wee-wee, urination, or voiding. It begins with letter M and ends with letter N. Yes, my dear? Huh? Micturition. How do you spell micturition, my dear? M I C U R A T. Micturition. What did you say? Louder, please. M I C T U R A T I O N. Okay. Is it micturition or micturation? It should be an A or should it be an I? A. A. You, somebody said A and you follow the A. Is it an A or give me an I? Give me an I! Wrong spelling is? Remember what I told you? You try your best to what? But yeah, she said at least she knows, right? So most likely, most likely she'll get it. Did you know it already or did you use your cell phone to get the Google answer? I already know it. What? Oh, she already, see? Very good. Are you an LVM? That's why. Advantage, right? Advantage. Now, micturition, voiding, urination, it means the same thing, right? So, my question to you, class, anybody who can answer the question, this hormone called ADH is produced where? Kidneys. No, wait. Sorry. Yeah, the hypothalamus. Miss Lilith, we just said it's produced yeah, here. And then you told me about the kidney. The target. <laughs> okay. Now, that's right. Before you open your mouth, you must what? <laughs> Listen, I'm not kidding you. Whether it's going to be now, whether it's physiology, or core nursing, or when you start working as a nurse, right? I'm not kidding you. Believe me, you can be fired, you can lose your job if you're not concentrating what the doctor is dictating on the phone or telling you to do. Oh my God, especially if the patient dies because you were not paying attention. Always be paying attention. You need to concentrate, focus, and be sure you know what is being asked of you. The ADH is a hormone produced by the hypothalamus but stored where? Where? Okay, there you go. So this is stored here, right? The two of them, right? Okay. So water retention now, this time. What is the target organ of this ADH? Okay, very good. Finally, okay. Now, can anybody tell me? So in other words, for it to reach the kidney, it has to what? Travel from the blood vessels or what? the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland because that's where it's stored, okay? And then travels to the blood vessels, remember? Remember, remember our blood vessels here, right? What blood vessel will bring blood away from the brain? Jugular. There you go, my man, you're the man, right? Jugular veins, jugular veins, joints, what? Brachiocephalic veins, brachiocephalic veins, both on left and right, they come the superior vena cava, enters what? The right side of the heart, goes to the lung, it doesn't matter, goes to the left side of the heart, then aorta, then what? Aorta goes down, 
If it goes up, it's called ascending aorta, then art and what? If it starts to go down, it's called what? Descending. Because descending means? Down. Don't you love anatomy? And what do you call that aorta that found in the thoracic cavity? Abdominal. Thoracic aorta. What about the abdominal cavity? Abdominal aorta. Now, once it reaches the abdominal aorta, it gives rise to what? Renal what? Artery. So what will bring the hormone to the kidney would be the renal because an artery brings blood to the organ, while the vein will bring blood what? Away. Away from the organ. So it will make the kidney what? Retain the water. Now my question is, is the, no, this is not a physiology class, what do you think will trigger the release of this hormone from the posterior lobe where it is stored? What do you think will trigger the release of this hormone? Anyone? Yes? Increasing concentration of electrolytes. Mm -hmm. Yes? A drop in blood pressure. Why will there be a drop in the blood pressure, Mr. Petrosian? If you have like diarrhea or something. What happens when you have diarrhea, Mr. Petrosian? You lose a lot of plasma. Plasma or water first? Water. Water. Now what is found in your blood plasma? Water. water. So if you lose water and you're still... Will that affect your circulating blood volume? Yes. yes. Because that water in your stool should have been absorbed and should have become part of your blood plasma, which is what? Water, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, 66% of your body weight is water. So if you have dehydration due to diarrhea or polyuria, when you have increased urine output, like in diabetic patients, what will the body try to do? Store water. Store or retain water by the kidney. And what hormone will be responsible for doing that? Does that make sense? Yes. You need to understand your own body and your body of your patients. In the, in, the, in the desire to bring about homeostasis or equilibrium, in patients with diarrhea, you lose water, the body would say, hey, you need to release this hormone, target organ kidney, tell the kidney, you know what, retain the water because if not, the patient could die. But unfortunately though, despite the heroic efforts of the kidney, the hypothalamus, and the posterior lobe, and the pituitary gland, it will not suffice. That's the reason why we have to intervene. Who will intervene? The doctor and the nurse. We have to replace the fluid that has what? Lost, either oral replacement or what? Intravenous fluid replacement together with the electrolytes that have been lost in the stools in a diarrheic stool, right? You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so target organ kidney, reach there by the blood vessels, right? Now, what does oxytocin do? Uterine contractions. What? Uterine contractions. During what? Okay. And what is the purpose of these, Miss Julian? Um, to help you give birth. Help give birth. Why? Because why? Birth canal. It's it's. Nine months, it's about time. You have overstayed, your rent is overdue. After staying there for free for nine months, it's about time. You have to leave that uterine cavity, okay? So what will these muscles do? Contract, right, remember? And who is responsible for making the muscles contract? The oxytocin. So, does anybody know the name of the muscle wall in, although it's not our lecture yet, but some people have the capacity to go beyond, right? What is the name of that muscle that is in the wall of the uterine wall? Yes. Yes. Yes, my dear. No. It begins with letter M. Mayo. Mayo. Oh, my you're, the, you're right, my friend. Myometrium. What does myo mean? Muscle. You're talking about the myo epithelial cells. For, that's a different Remember, one, okay? Yeah. Okay, so myometrium. In the wall of the uterus, we have three layers. Endometrium, myometrium, and perimetrium, okay? When these muscles contract, what happens to the baby inside? Pushes, Pushes down, down, and then finally what? What happens to the baby? 
Maar het kanaal wordt afwens? Oh, thank you, oxytocin. You made my day. Okay. So this is the birth canal, or what we call the vagina. As the oxytocin muscle makes, uh, as the oxytocin makes the muscles contract in the wall of the uterus called myometrium, the baby is now what? Now you know what it's called crowning. Crowning is when the baby, the crown, and then what? Oh my goodness. Now, what else? Aside from uterine contraction, what else is this hormone for? Ejection of milk. What is it? Ejection. Milk. Okay. Milk what? Ejection. Ejection? Yes. Okay. And how is this possible? Yes? The prostate and the fat difference. Yes, but in terms of milk ejection, how is it possible? The baby sucks on it and produces Okay. So for those of you who are mothers and who are going to be future mothers, Right? You said you want to be a future mother. When the baby sucks the nipple, have you ever seen a, a baby with yes. eyes closed? Even with the eyes closed, I think they can smell the mother, not the father who's smelly. The mother, I think they can smell the middle. <laughs> Maternal bonding, right? So, when you suck the nipple, it sends a signal to the posterior lobe to release what? Milk. Not, not yet milk. The oxytocin, right? Once the oxytocin is released, it travels through the blood circulation. It goes to where? To the myoepithelial cells in the nipple of the breast, which causes what? Release of milk. In other words, if that baby keeps on sucking the nipple of the mom, the milk will be forever. No, I'm just now, have, have you seen that uh, there was a, uh, on the front page of Time Magazine, a mother had a five-year-old child on a stool. What was the child doing? Breastfeeding. Breastfeeding. doesn't have nutrients anymore, does it? Well, we should thank nature because I think it's a lot. Yes? My mother breastfed my brother for four years and uh, the doctor said there were still nutrients and not one time he did not get sick. Jesus In other words, milk will still be milk. Now, does anybody know the name of the milk, the first milk that comes out from the breast? Yes? Somebody says something, yes? Colostrum, very good. One of these days, I will be collecting all the colostrums of the mothers and put them in a tetra pack and sell it in Walmart. It's called colostrum gamma, okay? I'm just kidding. Now, why is colostrum important? It's like gold. Yes? Is that nerve? It contains the to the baby Of course, my goodness. Exactamente. The colostrum contains the antibodies, which is IgA, immunoglobulin A, produced by these <laughs> glands, the, the mammary glands. Is that going to protect your baby? Yes. Would I therefore recommend that you breastfeed your babies? Yes. If only I were a mother, I would do the same thing, but I am not. I do not have any ovaries and uterus. Okay, what else? Prostate. The prostate and the vas deferens. Well, prostate, I don't care about the prostate. The vas deferens. Vas deferens, yes, what else? Oh, it stops the bleeding after the birth. Very good. Why, how, is that possible? Because it constricts the uh, urinary arteries. Where did you read on that? Where did you learn that? Your oh my God! I said that in the video, really? Yeah. I didn't forget to say that? That's the mother who doesn't naturally produce it. Okay. Yeah. So, uterine contraction. It's pitocin. After what? Giving birth. Birth of the baby, which means this is what's going to happen. They're going to be down in bed. This is the uterus, endometrium, myometrium, perimetrium. What do you call the arteries of the uterus? Torch of anatomy. Mm. Amazing. Mm. It's excited. They call it seizure. You know, every time I learn something, I get a dead intellectual seizure. <laughs> this hormone will make the muscles contract. Why? Because I don't know if I use a analogy. 
Did I show this on the yes. YouTube too? Yes. Uterine artery has a lumen where the blood will flow, mm -hmm. right? See? When the baby comes out, the placenta has to what? Okay, which one come out first? The placenta or the baby? Baby. Baby, baby first. What is attached to the placenta and the baby? The umbilical cord. Umbilical cord. So the baby comes out first. There will be what? How do I know? And this will come out in the nursing board exam. How do I know that the, there is placental separation? Number one, there's lengthening of the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. Number two, a sudden gush of warm blood because the placenta is now separating from the wall. Mm -hmm. As the placenta separates from the wall, what happens to the uterine arteries and its branches? Been cut off. You now have a situation where the blood vessels are open or open? Open. 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 Correct? Okay. So if they are open, will the blood be able to flow? Yes. Will that woman have continuous vaginal bleeding? Yes. And what is the role played by oxytocin post-birth or delivery of the baby? It will make the uterine muscles what? Contract like this. And the moment you make the muscles contract in the myometrial contractility, what will it do to the uterine arteries and blood vessels? Compress! Stop the so the, mate, the mother will not die of severe bleeding, which leads to hypovolemia and hypovolemic shock. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay? So placenta, baby first, placenta, then, uh, okay, how do, you know, how do I know? How do you know what? Now, I don't know, are the LVS allowed to be in the maternity room? Maybe not, right? But the LVS. When you are in the delivery room, how do you know that the uterine muscles have contracted? They become what? Hard and solid and round? What happens if they do not contract? There's no muscle tone. So if there's no muscle tone, it's called what? Uterine what? What is ah? Ah, without atony. Uterine atony is when the muscles in the uterine wall do not contract. There is a lack of oxytocin. You do not compress the arteries and blood vessels in the wall of the myometrium. There is continuous bleeding. Bad or good? Bad. Okay. So, first the doctor is a man of science. He will think, what could be happening here? Okay. Now, you don't know this yet, but I'm telling you why it's important. When the baby is delivered, we cut the umbilical cord, do we examine the placenta? Yes. yes. When you look at the placenta, it's like a burger patty, 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 P-A-T-T-Y, with blood. Mm. You get used to it, so no problem. I was a medical student, clerk, intern, oh my God. I've gotten used to the smell, even though I don't like the smell, but what can you do? You want to be a doctor, so burger patty, patty, patty. So let's say one of them is missing. How do you know it's missing? Because it's now what? Like an excavated, like this. If it's not there, where is it? It's still there. It's called placenta retention. Is that possible? Yes. Okay. Let's say this is the placenta that was retained. Placenta retained. When the uterine muscles are to contract, what happens? Here, it's okay. Here, what happens? Am I able to con completely constrict, compress? No. no. Because what is blocking the retained placenta? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. So how do we get rid of that retained DNC, placenta? DNC. DNC. It's called DNC, dilatation and cure it hats, a French word. Scrape the wall to get rid of the placenta retention. Mm -hmm. We do the same thing for what? Abortion? When you have parts of the baby still there? Okay. Because if not, the mother will have bleeding and can bleed to death. Okay? Do you understand? Now, going back to this. So that's the reason why you need this now. And you probably read or you saw on the video that when the mother is having labor that is delayed, for example, the bag of water was ruptured at 6 in the morning. And you would expect in a natural schema of things, the uterine contraction should become what? More time. frequent and stronger. For those of you who are mothers, you know what I mean, right? 
So instead of every five minutes, it becomes every three minutes, it becomes every two minutes, every, every one minute, and it gets what? Stronger, and how do you know? Because it gets more painful. Are you ready, my dear, Miss? No. Me too, I'm not ready. I'm just getting scared. Okay. Just relax, chill, okay? The best thing you can do is to have another human being into this world. So I really praise all mothers, right? Okay. Without you, we won't even be here. See? So we should never talk back to our mothers, okay? How many of you talk back to your mothers? Never! Never! Love your mothers, okay? Without that, you would not be here. So when the uterine muscles contract, okay, the bottom line, therefore, is that it gets frequent, more frequent, and stronger, the uterine contraction. So what do you do? If in the event that the uterine contraction, instead of every four minutes, remains at every four minutes, let's say 7 a.m., it's every four minutes, it's 12 noon, it's still every four minutes, what the heck? Give them Pitocin. So what is Pitocin, Miss Lilith? It's uh, a medication that has Oxytocin. It's okay. Yeah. There you are, see? So it's called synthetic, what, what does synthetic mean? Man-made. What does synthetic mean? Man-made. So can I just use synthetic instead of man-made? Yeah. Why not, right? It's a game of? Words. Game of? Words. So you have to use the words that can easily what? Instead of saying man-made, which is better to say man-made or synthetic? synthetic. Less ATP, less ink. <laughs> Faster. Neuronal impulses in the brain, right? Synthetic, man-made. Who, 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 made, who made this pitocin? Smart guy. Smart guy who's human. Maybe a girl. Maybe a girl. I know man means woman or man, right? We can never tell, I don't know. But the idea here is that this person came up with a way to save lives. Or, because it's really what? Delayed labor. You understand? Delayed labor, you need what? Pitocin, right? While we're giving this drug, are we going to man man monitor? Yes. Yes. There is a way. I don't have to wait to the leaders in obstetrics, okay? Now, same thing here. We can also give pitocin, unless you're suspecting that. But obviously, if there is one part of the... Placenta missing there, you have to do the DNC, okay? Now, okay, so, what is other, so, let's go to the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. What hormones? Growth hormone? TSH. Growth, right? Very simple, I don't even have to go do, you do it in the detail, right? What about TSH? Thyroid stimulates what? Thyroid. Thyroid gland to produce its own hormones, T3 and T4, yes? Yeah, yes, yes, it's very important, yes. Um, going back to the oxytocin, so if, for example, like my manager had Shh. gone into labor, well, her water broke, but she wasn't experiencing any contractions or anything for 48 hours, nothing was happening, she didn't feel anything, so they had to kind of induce her into the that, It's called induction of labor. So does that mean she lacked also, uh, the oxytocin? Yes. yes, the word induction of labor, or to induce labor, is the verb, induction is a noun, is to give what? Pitocin. Yes, my dear, what's your question? Um, going back to the placenta, I'm just wondering if horses, I've delivered a lot of foals, and so I can't hear you, what, what do you say? I've delivered a lot of baby horses. Oh, and horses. Sometimes okay. they, they will give birth, and the placenta comes first. They call it a red bag delivery. Does mm. that happen with humans ever? Now, you will learn this in, in the case of placenta previa. It's still going to be the baby first, but it's low-lying placenta. In other words, if this were the uterus, right? This is the baby here, right? The baby, I don't know how to draw a baby. The placenta is here, right? Umbilical cord. Placenta, umbilical cord, right? Okay, now, in placenta previa, the placenta is down here. Good or bad? Bad. Okay, because why? It could cause vaginal bleeding. It's blocking the way of the baby. Now, in abruptio placenta, what is abruptio? Premature separation of what? It separates, the placenta separates even before eight or seven months of pregnancy. Bad or bad? bad. Very bad. Okay, anyway. So humans, I know. Horses, I have no idea. Okay. But this is this asking, that's fine, okay? Now, okay, what else? Give me another hormone, give me another hormone from LH. the picture. Yes? LH. LH? Blue okay, when you say LH, what's Blue the key word? Ovulation. So I presume you know what these words mean, right? The letters, right? Yeah. You know how to spell them too, right? Yes. The one thing I had is wrong spelling, right? Yes. Okay, 
What else? ACTH. Okay, what is ACTH? Adenocortico tropic. And it simulates what? Steroid hormone. Okay, 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 relax, relax. It stimulates what organ? Oh. Adrenal cortex to produce its own hormones, which we'll discuss later, right? Which is called the aldosterone, the miller corticoid, and the what? Glucocorticoid, which happens to be cortisol, right? Okay, what else? Uh, MSA. 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 MSA is an anything hormone? Yes. I don't really care about this hormone because it's only about the skin. I don't really care. FSA. Okay, what else? FSA. Huh? Follicular stimulation. Okay. So, would you like to group this with this, right? Yes. FSA is to simulate what? The ovarian what? Follicles, where the egg is going to be what? Mature. Produced and mature and everything. That what else? Prolactin. Okay, what is prolactin? Production of milk. So milk production. See the difference? Here it's called milk injection. Here's what? Milk production. This is a big difference. So can you imagine if I give a quiz and say hormone milk production, what's the answer? If I say hormone milk injection. Hi, my name is milk injection. What is your name? Oxytocin. Hi, my name is milk production. What is your name? Prolactin. Simple, right? How can you miss that, right? Okay. What else? Anything else? Um, we have the growth hormone, TSH. No. That's all. Huh? That's all? Okay. Now let's move down to the, let's go to the pineal gland, right? Melatonin. Okay. Every time you hear the melatonin, you think of what? The gland. So there's only two words, circadian rhythm. Okay. And you know what circadian rhythm means, right? Patterns of waking and sleeping day and night. Very simple, right? What else? So, anything else? We go down to where? Thymus. Okay, remember we said from top, bottom, right? Oh, thyroid. There you go. We want perfection. We do not wish to miss anyone. Glad? Sorry. Okay, what is the name? Where is the thyroid gland found? Anterior, okay, what is the name of this cartilage here? The thyroid. Thyroid cartilage. What is the name of the gland there? Thyroid gland. Oh my goodness, don't you love anatomy? So thyroid gland. Hormones. T3, T4. And what is T3? Tri? Iodo. Thyronine. T-H-Y-R-O-N-I-N-E. And what is T4? And why are these hormones important function? Metabolism. Of what? The cell. Energy. Of all and what is metabolism again and again? Of all chemical reactions. The sum of all the chemical reaction that takes place within the cell, the tissues, and the body. It could either be anabolism, which is building, or catabolism, which means to break down. And what is the hor other hormone? And what is this hormone for? Calcium and phosphate. Huh? Why would it be able to decrease the blood calcium level, Julian? Because it's, it goes to the bone. It takes it, takes it, it out the from the exosome okay. and puts it into the bone. So in other words, Increasing how did you learn about this? Well, your video and the book. But yeah. Of course, the book. And <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the this is the cell, a bone cell. Every single cell in your body has a blood vessel called capillary, right? Capillary cell, bone cell, osteocyte, osteoblast, whatever cell. And this is the blood vessel with blood. Okay, right? And the blood, does it contain plasma calcium? Yes. So this hormone will lower the blood calcium. Why? Because the calcium in the blood will go where? To the bone. Will go where? To the bone. Go where? Bone. Go where? Bone. And what is the process upon which the calcium in the blood will go to the bone? Calcification. Don't you love anatomy and tissue? Calcification! The question now is that, will that make the bone stronger? Yes. In other words, do I give this to my patients with osteoporosis? Yes. Did I mention that also in my YouTube videos? No. I did not. In fact, before I came here 12 years, I practiced medicine. We have a drug called Mia Calcic. 
Mia Kalsik. I don't know if it's available here, but obviously it's here because we bought it from here. We exported it to the, the Philippines. What do you think is this drug? The synthetic form of what? Isn't that amazing? You know what is lacking? You go to the chemistry lab, study that particular hormone, hey, I can do this. Mia Kalsik, in fact, I used to remember, it was so expensive because we had to import it from the United States. And with all the tariffs that you give, and you give us, very expensive. Who could afford this medication? Rich people. My rich patients. And what do I do? I charge them more expensive rates. I give it to the poor. No, I'm just kidding. So therefore, we put it in the form of a nasal spray to treat patients with what? Osteoporosis, right? Okay, now. What's the next gland? Parathyroid gland. Huh? Parathyroid gland. And what does the parathyroid gland secrete? Parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid gland. And what's it? Parathyroid hormone, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the effect of this hormone? Increases. Okay. In other words, this will make the calcium in the bone go to the blood, increasing the blood calcium. It also has effects on what? Kidney, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Containing calcium rather than expelling it in the urine. So it has the opposite effect. So you might be wondering, what, what the heck do I need to know these things, Dr. Gamo? Very simple. So what does PTH do? Increase what? The, blood the calcium in the blood, right? Yeah. What do you think, therefore, if a patient suffers from hypo para thyroidism? What does hypo mean? Low. Low. Decrease what? And therefore, what will be the effect on your blood calcium levels? And what is the term used? Hypocalcemia. Hypo low calciumemia means blood. Are we going to give calcium to these patients with hypoparathyroidism? Yes. What am I trying to show you? The knowledge that you acquire in this class, will that be relevant for pathophysiology and core nursing? Yes. Will this be important when you start practicing the nursing? Yes. Why did the doctor do this and do that? It's called the rationale or the scientific explanation. If you suffer from this condition, we measure the blood calcium level, it's low. You know the reason why? because the levels of PTH produced by the parathyroid gland is low, therefore it will lead to hypocalcemia. And you have tetany, which can also cause death. Okay, so we have to give calcium supplements. Okay, now, so let's move down. Thyroid, parathyroid. Thymus. Okay, the thymus, very good. So how many, ch what are the chances of a person confused with thyroid and thymus? A lot. A lot of times. What is the spelling of thyroid? T-H-Y-R-O-I-D. What is the spelling of thymus? T-H-Y-M-U-S. Where is the thyroid gland? Thyroid cartilage neck. That's the reason why if the thyroid gland becomes enlarged, it's called goiter. Why well, I forgot to mention this. What is needed to form your thyroid hormone? Do you need iodine? Yes. There's a reason why it's called triiodothyronine. How many atoms of iodine? What is tri? Oh my goodness, don't you love anatomy? Don't you love medical terminology? Do you understand? Yes. Okay. I hope you do not misconstrue when I say these things and some students at the end of the nine weeks, they make comments, oh, Dr. Gamo makes me look so stupid. No. My point is that I'm trying to open your mind to the fact that it's always what? K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, student, so that you understand and be able to retain, understand and retain the information so that when you take pathophysiology with Dr. Bakchari or me or Dr. Sue Park, you have a better grade. An A in pathophysiology is 100% guarantee of passing the board exam, okay? That's based on statistical analysis made by our university, okay? 
Now, let's move on. What's next? Time is, what's next? Let's go to the adrenal gland. Let's jump to the adrenal gland, right? Let's move it here. Adrenal gland has two parts, cortex, and then what? Adrenal. Cortex, two things. Gluco what? Corticoid, which is cortisol, and what's the other one? Mineral or what? Which is what? Aldosterone. Okay, in simple terms, what does glucocorticoid do? Glucose. What? Glucose. Glucose. So you can guess. Glucose means glucose. Increases blood glucose. Why? Why is there a need to increase blood glucose? Yes? What's your name again, my friend? You. No, the, the guy. Oh. Yes, what's your name? Young. Young. Do you know why? Why do you need to increase your glucose levels? In what situation? Yes, Miss Young. Mr. Young? Mm. No, I know you're very quiet, but if you don't know the answer, okay, you can try. Very good. Stress situation, right? In a flight, fright situation, you want to survive? Do you want your blood glucose levels to be high to survive? Yes? Okay. So glucocorticoid, what does it do to your blood glucose levels? Okay. What about mineral corticoid or aldosterone? A. Increases sodium, reduces potassium. Water what? Retention. Just like your ADH, what else? And potassium. Sodium what? Retention. You want to remember all the retention spurt before the expression, right? Mm -hmm. Group them together so that you don't get confused. And what's the third one? Potassium reduction. Okay. Okay, now, let me ask you this. Okay, let's ask the people at the back. Mr. Barrano, what is the target organ of, a target organ of aldosterone? Shh. Target organ, yes? The kidney is very good. Cancer is correct. In other words, this hormone will go to the blood circulation from the adrenal gland. Do you know where the adrenal gland is found? On top of the kidney. And that's the reason why another name for this gland is what? Supra renal gland. What does supra mean? OMG. Is there anything difficult? Sometimes. Supra means what? And renal means what? And what's another name for adrenal gland? So what is the adrenal gland? Above or on top of the kidney. How many adrenal glands do we have there for? Two. Because how many kidneys do we have? Two. Now, the question is, target organ is kidney. It will make the kidney what? Retain the water? So obviously you know the reason why it will be released when you have what? Dehydration. Diarrhea, polyuria, when you have increased urine output, like when you have Addison's disease or when you have diabetes mellitus. It will make you retain the sodium. It will make you excrete the potassium, right? So these are important things, okay? Because when you go to pathophysiology, there is a condition called Cushing's disease. What is, what is, what is wrong with Cushing's? High levels of these hormones compared to Addison's, Addison's low levels so which one high levels? Cushing's, Cushing's disease. C-U-S-H-I-N-G-S. What is Addison's? Low, low levels. levels. What is Cushing's? High levels. And they are directly opposite in most aspects. So in Cushing's disease, what do you think will happen to the blood glucose level? Like, high or low? Low. No. High. Now remember, your nursing career is at stake here. What happens in Cushing's? Why would it be high? Because you have high levels of what? And what will this hormone do? In Cushing's, there's high levels of the glucocorticoid. The blood sugar is always going to be what? What about the water? More or is it more or less retention? Or so will they gain weight? Yes. Will they have trunkal obesity? Yes. With fat de de development. Now what else? What happens to the sodium levels in the blood? 
What about the potassium that was in the blood? Because the potassium goes with the wee wee. What happens to the potassium levels in the blood? It drops. It's called hypo what? Hypokalemia. So what happens to the sodium levels? High. Are we going to give sodium chloride solutions or saline? No. Why not? Because this solution contains what? Sodium. And what happens to the sodium levels in these patients? So can you imagine if you take the nursing board exam and you decided to give this kind of solution to this patient with Cushing's, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? Well, technically speaking, make it worse. And there is the potential of what? Killing me softly with your fluids. Remember the song? Killing me softly with your song. Killing me softly with the fluids. In other words, because what you're going to have is a computerized test, and this computerized test has a data bank of questions, and if you answer, I will give this solution with sodium chloride to a patient with Cushing's who already has high levels of sodium because that hormone promotes sodium retention, the computer will say, eh, 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 eh. This is not a student of West Coast, because West Coast are smart student. I don't know what school he came from. He just killed the patient. Because what did you do? You get, it's called part of the nursing intervention. So those are the kinds of questions you expect to answer. Now, what about potassium here? In Cushing's? Cholemia. So are we going to give a banana? Yes. Because what does banana contain? Potassium. Potassium. So is that part of nursing intervention? Yes. yes. Are we going to give a banana to a patient with Addison's disease? No. no. Yes or no? No. no? no. Yes or no? No. Yes, if you want to kill them and lose your license, or better yet, not get the license yet. I'm just joking. And that is how they will tell. Based on the answers you give them during the NCLEX nursing board exam, every time you come up with the wrong answer, it's a potentially what? Alive or dead patient? Dead. Dead or dead? Dead. Dead or very dead? Very dead. Because you lack the necessary what? Common sense. Knowledge which results in what? Critical thinking or what? Common sense thinking. What is the basis of common sense thinking or critical thinking? Knowledge which has to be applied in the things you do as future nurses? Okay, now, next. After a dinner man, what's next? Well, kidney, I can write the kidney there. Remember the word? Pancreatic. Well, let's talk about the, oh, oh my gosh, the pancreas. Oh my goodness. What is in the, the pancreas that is endocrine? Yes. What are you saying? What is in the pancreas that is the endocrine component of the pancreas? Pilots of? Okay, you have alpha. Beta, and what else? Delta, 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 Lowers blood glucose. What about insulin? I'm sorry, lower blood glucose is will increase blood glucose, right? Yeah. So insulin will lower. And why is that important to know? Because what is the number one endocrine disorder that you can encounter? Okay. And I always try to start as early as in anatomy, which when you go to part of your cell, hopefully you will not forget. This is a cell. Does the cell need glucose? Yes. yes. Every single cell in your body needs what? Glucose. Bone cell, muscle cell, brain cell, especially the brain cells. Okay. Nucleocytoplasm, nucleocytoplasm, okay? Every cell or cells have what? A capillary. What's a capillary again? Small. And it contains blood, yes. right? Okay. Every time you eat, the food goes to the mouth, ingestion, you chew the food, it's called mastication. You swallow the food, it's called deglutition. 
and goes to the stomach. It's further digested. What is the purpose of digestion? To become a breakdown into small particles. Because once you reach from the esophagus, stomach, the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum, the small particles should go to the wall, which contains muscles. Muscles contain blood vessels. Blood vessels contain blood. In other words, after a meal, what happens to your blood glucose levels? If the food contains sugar, it becomes elevated because the glucose goes where? So the glucose goes to the blood, there will be a lot of G, right? Glucose. Normally, your blood glucose ranges from 60 to 115 or 120. Anything below 60 is hypoglycemia. Anything above 120 or 125 will be hyperglycemia, elevated blood glucose. After a meal, let's say you had your meal at 7 a.m., what happens to the blood glucose? It goes to 200 to 300. And what will the pancreas do? <laughs> High blood glucose levels, I need to release what? Who will release? Release what? I. What is I? Okay. Did I show this on the video? Yes. The door. What is this? To open the door. What is this? To open the door. Pretend that there is a door. One door, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. How many doors? Nine. How many keys do I need to open it at the same time? Nine. How many do I need? Nine. Now observe that every key has a particular specific what? Groove. They can only open a specific one. Door, which happens to be the insulin receptors. If I have a key, which is all known as what I, where will I do? Attach to where? The receptor. So I is like a key. Insulin is like a key that opens what? The door. So the moment the door is open, who will go inside? Who will go inside? Who will go inside? Who will go inside? And what happens to the blood glucose levels? Start from 200 back to normal. Now, what happens if there is no key? Will I be able to open the door? No. If I cannot open the door because there is no eye, and guess what? The glucose cannot enter the cell. The glucose remains where? And they will remain what? High. Is that an indication of diabetes mellitus? Did I mention about type 1 and type 2 in the video? Yes. yes. Type 1, which is 2, juvenile, young onset, young people, children, teenagers. It's called autoimmune. What do you, what do you mean by autoimmune? You had a prior bacterial viral infection, and your body had an immune response to attack the bacterial virus through antibodies and the immune system. The immune response destroyed the bacteria, but at the same time, the antibodies and the immune response will also destroy what? The beta cells. When you destroy the beta cells, will you be able to produce I? No. no. So there is what? Zero. What is it? Zero. Zero. Is there food for the cell? No. no. What will be the alternate source of energy? Fat. 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 They can utilize fat, but in the process of doing so, they develop what? Ketones or what ketone alias were ketoacidotic, mm -hmm. which is an acidic substance. Mm -hmm. In type two, two things: lack of what beta. insulin. It means the beta cells produce, but instead of producing nine, like two. I only have two or three. So if I have only three keys, will I be able to open the doors at the same time? No. So you still have to wait for your turn. But the analogy I normally make is what when you go to a movie house, nine people are selling tickets. You have 100 people waiting for their turn to buy the tickets. All of a sudden, they decided to sell only one. Two people selling tickets. What happens? You have to wait because the long line becomes longer because why? You only have two instead of nine or three out of nine, right? What else? When something wrong is what? The receptor. We call that insulin resistance. What do I mean by that? When this... Where's my key? My goodness. Oh, gosh. I'm getting old. When somebody messes up with their, the doorknob, like for example, somebody puts what? An epoxy there? I don't know, whatever, cement or whatever put there. Would it be able to match the groove? No. 
even though you have insulin, it might not be able to open because it doesn't match, right? Okay. But the good news is that not all of them have that same problem. That's why they can still work. Some of them, the insulin can work on defective receptor, good. Defective, good. So they can still enter that receptor. That's, that's normal. You understand? Now, in gestational diabetes, it's pregnant women who will most likely develop this. So they lack insulin, zero insulin. What is the treatment of choice? Inject them with what? I couldn't see. How can you fail the nursing board exam? You cannot. They lack? Inject. How do we inject? Abdominal wall. Abdominal wall. And again, just to remind you, it's not in the stomach. Some of the people, oh, stomach. I said, really? Go all the way to the stomach? Now, why the abdominal wall? Okay. It's called subcutaneous injection. Sub means below the skin, which contains a lot of fat. And you have to rotate what? The injection inside, because if not, you destroy the fat layer. It's called, you don't have to know this now. It's called lipodystrophy. OK, do you understand? Now, is this important? And you know the reason why we have to give insulin. And you will learn this in pathophysiology in my class. There are different types of insulin, rapid acting and slow acting. Rapid acting that is short duration acting, and then what? Slow acting, but long duration. It lasts for 24 hours, okay? And don't worry, you'll learn all of that. Now, are we good with uh, adrenal gland, right? Oh, oh, with the pancreas. So, can you imagine if I ask a student in pathophysiology to come to my class, because some of my students, unfortunately, do not have their anatomy with us. They come from other school, I don't know where, you know? So when they go to another school, we go to another school. <laughs> when we go to another school, okay, they come to me and oh, we took anatomy and physiology from this particular school. And if they do not know their anatomy, I ask them, where is the insulin produced? And they say thyroid gland. Oh my goodness. All the hair will fall. <laughs> this is the kind of nurse that we will produce, right? But our goal, therefore, it's not their fault. Some of them took it five years ago, four years ago, and what are the chances they'll forget? Very high. So they took anatomy and then work. Four years later, decided to become a nurse. Then you go. They forget everything, right? Okay. So it's about you have to catch up, right? You understand? Now, what else? So from the we uh, we have limited time. So let's talk about the. So we talk about the uh, the pancreas. Now let's we'll talk about the sex hormones, right? Every time you think of estrogen. Ovaries, right? Estrogen, and then what? Progesterone. So which one is important for secondary sexual characteristics? Estrogen. It's the reason why when a woman reaches puberty, like 9, 10, 11, 12, what happens? They develop their breasts, they develop what? Axillary hair, and then what? Pubic hair, and they become what? More curvaceous, right? Okay. What else? Progesterone, what does it do? Pregnancy. Maintenance of what? For pregnancy. Of pregnancy. What do I mean by that? This particular hormone, when you become pregnant, high levels of progesterone will make the endometrial wall what? Okay. Endometrial thicker. In, in Why? Because we are anticipating that because the woman is pregnant, the fertilized egg will what? Implant. implant on the wall. In order for it to implant and have a good time there, you want the wall to be thick, full of blood vessels, so you can provide them with the necessary what, nutritional requirements, oxygen and food. That is if you get pregnant. So the progesterone levels remain high. What happens? You did not get pregnant. Either one, you had no sex or, I don't know, abstinence, wrong timing because you did not time the sex during the ovulation. <laughs> and you keep on wondering, how come you're not pregnant? You've been married for two years. The ovulation, you don't know, okay? So now. The moment you do not get pregnant, what happens to the progesterone levels? It drops. It drops. And there is no more hormonal support. What happens to the wall? It necroses. Down. Necroses. It dies. And then what happens to the endometrial wall? It bleeds off. It's called sloughed off, right? Okay? Which means that when a woman is having menstrual bleeding, it is not just what? Blood coming out, but part of your what? Endometrial. Part of the endometrial wall. Yeah, so not, not, see, not everybody knows that, right? Me, I don't, I'm not even a woman, but I know. I pretend that I have what? 
You have to know your own body. The reason why you have menstrual bleeding every month is because of this. A drop in the progesterone levels causes you to bleed. Does that make sense, right? Yes. Okay? Do you understand? Now, okay, so, what is the male gonad? So female gonad or sex gland is ovary, male is what? Testes. What is the, what is the testis going to produce? Huh? Or progesterone, or what's the name? Testosterone, testosterone. right? Testosterone. Okay. And what produces the testosterone? Androgen. No. Okay, remember, what oh. produces the testosterone? Progesterone. Yes! Progesterone. Okay, okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Listen to the question. What in the testes produces your testosterone? It owns your citrus cells. Who said that? What? <laughs> Why do you know the answer there? <laughs> Where? It's not in your notes. It's in my notes. Show me your notes. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> I'm here excited. It's incomplete. You just put here testosterone interstitial. Where is the word cell? Well, the notes are for me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> do you know the answer? Miss Julian, do you know the answer too? Yes. Because of her or because of you? Well, you have, you have notes like hers too? Uh, no. Well, not with me, but I, I take different types of notes, but yes. Okay. So what produces the testosterone in the testes? Interstitial cells. What produces the sperm in the testes? You don't know the answer, right? Or well, you know the answer? For those of LVNs who oh, took anatomy before. Mm, nurse cells. Nurse cells. No. Really? We come from nurses? Really? Yes? Yes? What produces the sperm in the testes? No, anyway, that will be the last chapter. Like, digestive, we repro, it's called the seminiferous tubules. Anyway, you don't, don't worry about that. Is that what it says? No. tubules. The nurse cells or Sertola cells will support. They're, they're good. Can you imagine? All of us are supported by nurses. <laughs> okay. So, and of course for men, the testosterone is for what? Axillary hair, pubic hair, and then of course, bigger muscles hopefully, and then what? Change the, the vogue, the, the, they become more what, baritone, right? Okay, now, is that clear? Okay. Now let's go to the respiratory, respiratory system. Okay. Now, why is this system important? How important is this? Aside from the heart, which will be our topic for next week, right? We still have next week, right? Week eight? Yes. Okay. I might forget. So, the respiratory system, remember, if you have taken, um, what do you call this? Um, basic life support for healthcare providers, or CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, a patient goes into cardiac arrest, we do what? Chest compression, at the same time, what? Airway. Okay. It used to be what? A, B, C. Airway, breathing, what? Circulation by doing chest compression. Mm -hmm. Heart stops, you have to compress to bring blood to the brain. Now, is it A, B, C or C, A, B? C, A, B. Now it's C, A, B. So it's, you have to compress right away because what is critical is what? Blood going where? The brain. Then what? A for what? Airway. Followed by? Breathing, right? So the bottom line is, is the heart and your lung considered vital organs? Yes. yes. Because if they do not function well, you will die. Okay? So let's pretend this is what? The nose, this is the mouth. Okay. Okay. And then you have here, what is that? Naso what? Naso pharynx. Behind the nose. What about behind the oral cavity? Oral pharynx. And what does pharynx mean? Throat. Throat. So what is the one below, behind the larynx? Laryngeal pharynx. So there's the pharynx here. And remember the larynx. It's a boundary. We start with the larynx, that is what we call what? Lower respiratory tract. Anything above the larynx is considered what? Upper, Upper respiratory tract. That's why some of you probably, when you were diagnosed by doctors like me, I would say you are suffering from URTI. What is URTI? Upper respiratory tract infection. Exactly, so you're coughing, you're sneezing, sneezing, coughing, upper airway. Lower airway begins with what? 
Where do I begin? Larynx, okay? So the larynx, okay? And why is the larynx important? Because, well, is the voice important or because it's part of the airway? Part of the airway, right? If this were the larynx here, okay? The larynx, what is the opening of the larynx class? Glottis. What's on top of the glottis? And epi means above the glottis or glottic opening. And this opening is covered or this is epiglottis is made of cartilage. The larynx is also made of cartilage. You have a lot of cartilage involved here. You have the thyroid cartilage, that's part of the larynx, right? Cricoid cartilage, which is a signet ring, is also part of the larynx. The larynx. Mm -hmm. Retinoid, corniculate, cuneiform. When you dissect a diaper, you can see that there, okay? Epiglottis, in the opening, or glottis, which is the glottic opening, mm -hmm. you have vocal folds and vocal cords, eh? Mm -hmm. So which one is the true vocal cord? Which one is the false? Vestibular one. Fold. Fold and cord, right? You understand? So, Mr. Petrosha was saying that it's a voice box. Why? Example, when I sing, the hills are alive. Did I do the same thing in the video? Yes. It's my favorite song. To the sound of music. Oh. Ah. What happens to the vocal cords? They the true vocal cords or the vocal fold will vibrate producing a sound. Mm -hmm. What about the folds or the vestibular fold? No way. They do not vibrate, right? Okay? So, then you have what? The different cartilage from the epiglottis, thyroid in the neck, cricoid, and then what? Cardiculate, all those other cords, then eventually what? From the larynx, you have your what? Trachea. Trachea, which is your main windpipe, made of fabric rings. <laughs> and then you have your primary what? Right. Now, which one is more prone to aspiration pneumonia? Right. The right, why? It's more vertical. It is what? Shorter? Why? Deeper. Wider? Deeper. More what? Vertical or steeper, and there were there were less resistance to airflow, right? Less resistance to air. You know what resistance means, right? Okay, to airflow. Okay. So, and what exactly is aspiration pneumonia? Aspirate means when the food instead of going to where, esophagus at the back of the trachea is what? Esophagus to the stomach. Instead of going to the esophagus, the stomach, it goes where? Glottis. Larynx, trachea, and right side. And therefore, if you take an x-ray with a chest PA, posterior anterior view of the chest, you can see the food content where? In the right primary bronchus. Now, what can cause this? Aspirate. When you feed the patient while lying down or sitting? Lying, lying down. Are we going to feed them while lying down? No. no. Always what? High back rest, if possible. Does it make sense? Yes. Are we going to feed them when they're sleeping? Yeah. It's the most stupid thing. You understand? Okay. Now, and I think I showed this on the video. I chose that video because I, I think I asked one student to come forward. What's the difference between choking and aspiration? In aspiration, the food really went to the lung. In choking, where is the food? It gets stuck where? Here. Here. Where you have the vocal cords and the glottic opening. The glottic opening is where supposed the air to go through, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the universal sign of choking? Mm -hmm. So normally when you ask somebody, are you choking? Go ahead, ask me. Are you choking? Yes, I am. <laughs> am I really choking? I just want your phone number. <laughs> your wife is not around. She went home to the Philippines at 12 noon. I'm not kidding, it's true. I'm single and ready to mingle when she's not around. No, I'm just joking. So if somebody goes to you like this and you ask her or him, are you choking? And he answers back. They're not choking. They're not. Of course they're not choking. They just want what? A slap. Attention. Attention. 
But, but I could actually be wrong, so just give them the benefit of that, do a Heimlich maneuver. So when you do a Heimlich maneuver, what do you do? Stay at the back of the patient, put your what? The flat surface of the thumb like this, make a one fist like this, around what? Between, between the cyphoid process and the navel, in between, and then what? Backward, and then what? Uh -oh. Upward thrust, so that the piece of meat, which is the most common, like, will pop out. Now what happens if you were not successful, the patient will lose consciousness, why? Because there's no air going to the lung, there was no exchange of gases, they'll pass out. No more oxygen to the brain, right? And you have to perform, if you have done CPR, what? Just regular chest compression. We used to do the abdominal thrust, we don't know, do that anymore, right? Now let's say you're alone, what do you do? Table, chair. Chair, what kind of chair? A chair with wheels, like this? No. And go like this? No, we chairs, right? A table that's stationary, yes. But before you do that, what should you do? Dial what? Are we gonna use a cell phone or a landline? <coughs> Why landline? It's here to trace. You don't even have to speak. The moment you dial 911 and they know that you are there, that there's no sound, they will have to send. They have to send. They're not, they, they will be held liable, right? Okay, you understand? So be aware of those things, right? Okay, now, so after the primary bronchus, what's next? Secondary, tertiary, and then your what? Bronchioles. Now what is found in the wall of the bronchioles? Huh? What is the significant difference between bronchioles and bronchi and larynx? What is larynx made of? Bronchi, trachea, bronchi, secondary bronchi, tertiary bronchi, cart. What about the bronchus? What is found in the wall? Who said smooth muscle? Of course, smooth muscles, right? So, what is the implication here? If the smooth muscles are found in the wall of the bronchioles, if the muscles relax, you have bronchial what? Dilation. If the smooth muscles contract, Bronco constriction or bronco muscle spasm or bronco spasm. How many of you are asthmatic here? I have talked about this before, right? When you have an asthmatic attack, obviously the smooth muscles contract. You have bronco constriction, you end up with wheezing. Are you having a good time? Yes, having a good time, almost dying. Okay. Because you have one million of those alveoli and air sacs, one million, one million. Can you imagine if all of them will have, it will constrict at the same time? It's narrowing of the airways, there's wheezing, difficulty of breathing, shortness of breath, right? And the only way to help is what? Who, who had, an was it your pearl? Yeah. And you had no one? Right? I have an answer. Where is it? Show it. Show me the money. Okay, yes, pearl, where's yours? I found it. After, after how many months? Okay, what's your brand? Is that tributyl? Albuterol? It's albuterol. It's ventilator. Albuterol? Ventolin. Ventolin, okay. Oh my God, those were the days of my youth. When you ever have asthmatic patients, they come at the same time. At two in the morning, I hit them. But I have to save them, right? So, if you're so sleepy, and they all come at the same time, one here and there, <laughs> like a symphony, you know? <laughs> a nurse, nebulized. My, oh my God, my nurses were so good. When they come in, routine, Standard operating procedure, nebulized, vital signs, bam! Question, yes? Yeah, sorry, I, it's just a quick one. I, I won't take you back too far. Uh, if the person's choking and you aren't successful at getting the food out with the hand maneuver, can you still do the chest compression? Yeah. We actually do that because this is what's going to happen. If you were not successful, because it can happen, it's still there, the, 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 the piece of meat is still there, so there's no air going in, right? Yeah. So what is recommended based on the basic life support guidelines, there will come a time when there's no air to the blood or oxygen, there is no oxygen to the brain, you'll let it pass out. They will lose consciousness, you have to support them. They land on the floor, make sure they don't get a skull fracture, it will kill them. So all you need to do is just purely one. That's all. Before, we used to do the abdominal thrust and then one. But, but the, the question now is this, the, 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 there is now a move to just purely do what? Chest compression. That's just, because by compressing, you're hopefully what? Compression. Okay. 
But of course you have to wait for now. You want to make sure Daniel comes here, the paramedics come. Okay. okay, so make sure you know what you're doing. Okay, now. Okay, now. So after the bronchios, what's next? The Air sac or alveolar wall. There are two types of cells here, type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes, right? Which one is going to produce the surfactant? Type 2. So what is lining the alveolar wall be type 1, right? They are usually squamous or flat cells to facilitate what? <coughs> Diffusion of gases, right? When you inhale, the air contains oxygen. The oxygen will go from high to low. What do you call that? Diffusion. It goes to the red blood cell, and the red blood cell will bring the blood where? To the pulmonary veins. Remember how many do we have? Two on the right lung, two on the left, and it brings where? AR, remember? Okay. What chamber of the heart? Left, right. left or right? Right. Left atrium. Okay. So the left ventricle and aorta, right? The blood that came here came from where? The right ventricle and passes to the pulmonary what? Trunk and pulmonary what? Artery. artery, which are two of them, right? Pulmonary artery, left, right and left. You saw that in the models and we saw that in the AR, right? Okay. So. I normally think of this as a red bus. The red blood cell is a red bus. What is the passenger here on the pulmonary veins? Oxygen. What about the carbon dioxide rich blood in the vena cava and the veins in the right side of the heart? CO2, right? And where is the CO2 driving with? The red blood cell. So do not think that the red blood cell will only what, transport oxygen, it also transports what? Carbon dioxide. So the red blood cell is like a red bus. When the red blood cell enters here, it's like a bus. What does the bus driver do? Open the door, who will disembark? CO2. CO2. With diffusion, and what do you do with the CO2? Exhale, because it's waste, we do not need. Who needs the CO2? The plants. And what do the plants do with photosynthesis? Converts that into what? Oxygen. And who, where, who needs the oxygen? So can we afford to get all this, cut all these trees? No. Must be crazy, right? You have to understand that we need those trees and plants, right? Okay. Now. So, do you see the important? Now, why is surfactant so important? Anyone? Why is what? What is what? What is, yes, my dear. Okay, what was the question? Why, why is surfactant why important? Why is surfactant important? And what did you say? To prevent what? Collapse of the air sac. Okay? You want to reduce the surface tension. To reduce the surface tension to keep it open, and air sac will be filled with air. What happens if you lack surfactant, like in premature babies, premature, like seven months, six months, if there is not enough surfactant, what happens? Collapses. You do not reduce the surface tension, the air sac will what? Like a balloon will what? Deflate. The moment the balloon deflates like this, will you be able to have exchange of gases? No. And the baby could what? Yeah. Die. It's called respiratory distress syndrome, RDS. Common among premature babies, RDS means respiratory distress syndrome. And what do you think Dr. Gamo will tell the nurse to inject the patient with what? Surfactant. What kind of surfactant? Synthetic. Yes! <laughs> Excited, Synthetic what? <laughs> Will that save the life of that premature baby? Yeah. Yes. yes. Don't you love these smart people who use their, they research what is this surfactant look like under the lab? Oh, so easy to make. But actually I don't think it's easy. I don't know how they do it, but what is their motive there? To save lives or to have more money for themselves? I'm just both of the above. Yeah, it's money first. But I would presume that they're doing it to save lives and money will be a secondary consideration, I hope. It's good. Can you imagine how many of these young premature infants are saved by the synthetic surfactant that they manufacture? I don't care if they become rich, these companies, as long as they save a single baby who is premature. If they really care about saving, they would make it for free. So the purpose is that to save lives, right? Okay, now, are there any questions here? Now, our lung, is protected by the serous membrane. What is the name of the serous membrane that protects the lung? 
and and these are examples of what kind of membranes and what does serous membrane secrete and what is so what secretes the fluid the visceral. both visceral and parietal pleura because the membranes are the ones secreting what these are serous membranes they're the ones that secrete the serous fluid in this particular case what is the name of the pleura visceral and parietal pleura which one is found on the surface of the lung? The visceral. Which one is attached to the thoracic wall? The parietal. Which means the rib cage, the parietal. What do you call the space between the visceral? The thoracic. Visceral. On the surface of the lung, visceral pleura. On the, the rib cage, the thoracic wall is parietal pleura. What do you call the space between the two? The parietal. Pleural cavity. And what's inside the pleural cavity? Pleural. Pleural fluid. And what is the purpose of this fluid? Reduce the friction. Lubrication, which, which will reduce the friction. As we always say, it's like a natural KY to reduce the friction so that there will be no pain. And it therefore acts as a what? Lubricant. How thick should this fluid be? Paper thin. Paper thin. Paper thin. Every time you inhale, with the lung expands, will there be pain? No. no so in behalf of humanity, I'd like to thank the plural fluid produced by the plural membranes. Thank you, Plura. You made each other's day, right? <coughs> now, is it possible to have excessive amount of pleural fluid? Yes. 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 And can anybody tell me what is it called? Pleurisy. Huh? Pleurisy. Pleurisy, which is, of course, inflammation of the pleural gland. What is the term used when there is excessive amount of pleural fluid due to pleurisy or inflammation and pneumonia or infection of the lung? Yes? Okay, go ahead. Let's see if Google knows the answer. Excessive amount of pleural fluid is pleural blank. It begins with letter E and ends with N. Go ahead. No. Oh, effusion. Oh. Mr. Petrosa, does it begin with E? Yes. Does it end with N? Yes. Does it have two F's in between, the middle? Effusion, yeah. Effusion. Oh, effusion. effusion. It's called what? Effusion. Pleural effusion. It's called what? Effusion. It's called what? Effusion. effusion. When someone has pleural effusion, can it be seen on an x ray? Yes. 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 Two things. As a clinician, as a medical doctor, we only think of two things. Whenever a patient has <gasps> pleural effusion, only two things. One, it could be due to what? Yeah. Like pleurisy, pleurisy, pneumonia or pleurisy, or the big C. What is the big C? Cancer. Cancer. So which do you prefer? Cancer or infection? Infection. Which do you think will kill you? Cancer. Both. Both could kill you. <laughs> which is easily to treat? Infection. infection. All we need to do is do a thorus, thorus synthesis, get the needle and syringe, get the specimen, the pleural fluid, send it to the lab. My wife works at a microbiology lab. They look at the specimen, do a culture. One day later, oh, honey, this is the result of my studies. Oh, heavy growth of strep pneumonia. Mm. Resistant to penicillin, sensitive to ceftazidine. Which drug will I give, penicillin or ceftazidine? Ceftazidine. Of course, third generation cephalosporin. How do you know it's effective? Because the fever pattern will what? Up and then the patient will have better, what, no more difficulty of breathing, and the amount of fluid coming out will be what, less. Does that make sense? Okay. So can this be difficult? Yes. What about how do you determine cancer? We send a specimen to the pathologist and do a histopathologic study to determine the presence of cancer cells. Can you easily tell whether a cancer cell is cancer or not? Yes. With the appearance, the morphologic appearance of the cell. So we are men and women of science, just like you. You have to know what exactly you're dealing with, okay? Muscles for breathing, what is the primary muscle for breathing? Diaphragm. And what is the nerve supply to the diaphragm? Diaphragm. And where does this pinny come from? C3, C4, C5. Keeps the diaphragm alive. C3, C4, C5. Keeps the diaphragm alive. Do we see that in the medical school at UCLA? Now I yes, we do. C3, C4, C5. <laughs> Keeps the diaphragm alive. Do the five and the alive rhyme? Yes. But what is the magic number? Three, four, four. five. The middle of four, right? Five. But it doesn't matter. If you want to break your spine, where do you want to break it? C4 or C4? C4. C4. Remember the C4, the explosives, you know, C4? Okay, in other words, the phrenic nerve comes from C3, C4, C5. This is just a joke, but it could be something. When you go to a swimming pool, there's a big sign that says, do not dive shallow pool. What do most men do? Dive. What happens if they, 
They break the spine and the C4 level is destroyed. They will stop what? They go into respiratory arrest because you paralyze what? The diaphragm as a result of damage to what nerve? See? C3, C4, C5 keeps the diaphragm alive. If you destroy C4, C3, and C5, you are dead. I oh, know, not, not yet, not yet. I can sell you my what? Ventilator. I'm a businessman. At the reasonable rate, I can even lend it to you. I'm just joking. The idea here is that we can put you what? What is a breathing machine called? A ventilator or a respirator. You see that in the shows? I had this patient. He was very young. He was 25 years old. I don't know if I shared this with you in the lab. He was uh, driving a motorcycle. He was wearing a helmet. So he hit a rock. He flew. To cut the story short, cervical spine fracture with cervical spine injury, transection at XC4. I saw him. I'm not a, I am not a neurosurgeon. I'm a rehab guy, so for physical therapy and everything. I saw the wife. The wife was pregnant, eight months, about to deliver the baby. The husband was paralyzed from the waist down. That is called what? Quadriplegic. So I felt so bad because why? High levels of cervical spine injury, the chances of survival is poor or very poor? Now, he came from a rich family, so he was able to buy his own ventilator. So when he went home, he had a ventilator at home. But I don't think that's a good prognosis. The pneumonia, infection, and everything. So very bad. So the moral lesson is that when you go to the pool that's says shallow, do not dive. And second, do not what? Ride a motorcycle. Yes. Because remember, the helmet protects what? The skull. What can protect your neck? Okay. Now, is that there's a collar? Is it true? There is. The yeah. collar that is yeah. continuous yeah. with the, I don't know. No, it's, it's like a separate. It's a whole collar and then they all yeah. can that, they also Can that really spine. prevent you from breaking your cervical spine? There's no oh. Iraq. Just don't do it. <laughs> Okay, the best thing you can do, give your motorcycle to me, we will sell it, we'll have half. Half of the profit goes to you, half of it goes to me because I will be the one selling. I'm a very good salesman, believe me. I can sell anything. Yeah, you have any questions regarding this? Okay, I'm gonna give you a, a short break and after which five minutes we can have the quiz, okay?